the basis of our uh, uh, message today is, well, that's basically the title, An Extraordinary Life. Okay? Now, the passage I would like to share with you today is this. Now, if, if I may ask you, could you please read it with me? Ready? Read. The day comes for you to steal and kill and destroy. I dream that they may have to do and have it in the mountains to the full detail. Okay, I'm using the amplified version of John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only, his job description, okay, in our lives, pertaining to our lives, his job description is only to steal and to kill and destroy. He just wants to mess up lives. All you need to do is look around you. There are a lot of messed up lives. Some of them may be in your family. Some of them may be in your neighborhood. Some of them may be in your office and school. There are a lot of messed up lives. Comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Now, comparatively, now Jesus says, I came that, what's the purpose? Why you, what's the purpose of his coming? That they may have and enjoy life. So you can enjoy life. Okay, praise the Lord. Why the Lord? Yes, you can enjoy life. The problem is sometimes some Christians are, you know, their faces are like they just drank a whole bottle of vinegar. <laughs> They're so sour. I gave them they have an enjoy life. I know it's this. Have it in abundance to the full and sail in overflows. Now what I'd like, the first thing that I would like to share with you today, as far as my message of, of, of eternal life being an, an extraordinary life, is eternal life is always in the now. Notice, pertaining to the bulk of the understanding of some Christians that eternal life is the life in heaven after you die. Now watch this. Notice what Jesus says. The thief comes. What is that? Past tense, present tense, future tense. Present tense. Meaning to say, right here, right now, the thief wants to mess up lives. See, if eternal life is the life in heaven after you die, what is he going to steal in heaven? He's off limits in heaven. He's going to steal that life now. He's going to destroy that life now. He's going to kill that life now. As a matter of fact, he's waiting for you outside now. <laughs> or he's waiting for you at home now. Because he just wants to mess up your life. Now Jesus says, I have gone that you may have life when? Now. You have to have abundant life now. You see, and even when we engage this life, we, we live by faith and not by sight. Now, even the definition of faith in the Bible is in the present tense. The Bible says, now faith is, present tense, the assurance of things you hope for. Everything that we hope for in life is in the future, but we believe for it now. Even if, you know, you, you don't see it coming yet, you believe for it now. And this is why God is in the now. When we talk about eternal, eternal is kind of different, although it's the same, but it's kind of different when you compare it with everlasting. When, when, when the Bible says, uh, he who believes in me has, eternal, has everlasting life. Everlasting has a sense of continuity. It goes on and on and on. But eternal is kind of different. Why? Because if it, the, the word eternal, especially if you connect it with God, God being eternal, God doesn't have any beginning, doesn't have any end. God is always in the now. As a matter of fact, when, when Moses uh, asked God, hey, you're bringing me to, to Egypt to, to, to deliver Israel, what's your name? What did God say? I am. He, he didn't say I was. He didn't say, I will be. He says, I am. I am what? I am everything that your faith needs me to be. Now, I am a blank check to you. Now. And this is why the Bible says that God is our ever present help in time of need. He's always in the now. Amen. That's why you believe for Him now. And this is why eternal life is in the now. The, the enemy is not going to steal anything in heaven. It's all limits in heaven. He's 
seals it down. The life that God wants you to live, the life that God wants to give you, He wants to destroy it now. Even in churches, there are so many messed up people in churches today. So many broken marriages in churches today. As a matter of fact, the divorce rate in the church, it, it's not even, it's, it's not, comparatively, the divorce rate in the church today is basically the same as the world. So instead of, instead of the church influencing the world, instead of us being the light of the world, the, church, the, the world is influencing the church today. Now, me, as I said a while ago, I, I want to understand what I believe in. And so, uh, me, I, I like to investigate. And so, when, when I take a look at other versions of Scripture, see, it says here, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Oh, thank you, Lord. Made me understand. Okay. Now, notice Jesus says, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Now, watch this. And having in abundance, to the full, until... Did you see a progression? Yes. See, this is why the Bible says, you are, if you are truly a child of God, you are being transformed from glory to glory in ever increasing glory. Not ever stagnating. Not ever deteriorating. That would be tragic. Ever increasing. Meaning to say, if you have been a Christian for five years, you shouldn't remain the same. In abundance of the full till it overflows. You see this? Hello? Yes. You see it, right? <laughs> this is abundant. Yeah. It's not full. A while ago it was full. But it could not overflow. Why? There's a gap. Now, what if we put this in a level surface and start pouring water on it? And then it starts to overflow. What will happen to the, to the surroundings? It'll get wet. Meaning to say, the surroundings got affected by what overflow. Meaning to say, the life that God wants to give you is such that you overflow so much so that the surroundings, the people around you, and the circumstances around you can get affected for the glory of God. Amen. Now, the question before you say amen. And I appreciate, I appreciate it every, and amen every once in a while. But see, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. If that is the kind of life God wants me to live, that I overflow so much so that the surroundings can get affected for the glory of God, I need to ask myself the question, when was the last time I affected someone for the glory of God? Because if the answer is you have not, the second question you, ask, you need to ask yourself is, why not? When that is the life God wants you to live. That is the kind of life that God paid at such a high price for at the cross of Calvary. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is why this life is extraordinary life. You can overflow and affect the people around you for the glory of God. This is no ordinary life. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at what St. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, that those people who have no relationship with God, those people who are uh, apart from God, are actually separated from the life of God. They are not just separated from God, they are separated from the life of God. This is the kind of life Jesus wants to give you. This is the kind of life God wants you to live for His glory. So that people around you, so that circumstances around you can change, can get affected for the glory of God. Now you can say amen. 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 There you go. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in South San Francisco, I was preaching from a heavy heart, and then after that I just sat down in the corner, and this Filipino guy comes up to me and says, Brother uh, Ryan, do you still remember me? And in all honesty, I said, um, I'm sorry, I don't. And then he said, uh, do you remember 1995? I said, bro, I don't even remember last week. <laughs> it's a long time ago. I said, why, what happened in 95? He said, you know, I was walking aimlessly in President's Avenue in BF Homes in Paranac. I was walking aimlessly in, in, in BF Homes. I was so de depressed, I was so distraught, I was so broken because my wife was about to leave me that day. 
and then I saw you. You were pumping gas. I was so desperate. I needed somebody to talk to. You didn't know me, but I knew you were a Christian. I went up to you and I just started sharing, you know, just unloading my burden and my hurt. Rayan, you listened. And before you left, you shared Jesus with me. You shared Jesus to me. And then you prayed for me and for my wife for us not to separate that day. Brother Rayan, may I introduce you to my wife? We are now both serving the Lord. Now, for those of you who didn't get excited, you should get the spiritual thermometer and find out. <laughs> that was the only, that was the first and only time I saw the guy until that time. Now, you need to understand what I'm trying to say. Because God gave me life, it overflowed to the man, it overflowed to the wife, and now they are both serving the Lord. How many more people are going to get affected by what overflowed? Oh my goodness, you cannot even begin to imagine what God can do in you, for you, and through you. For the glory of God. Amen. This is not about just going to church, my friends. You can go to church and still be far away from God. You can go to church and be separated from the life of God. And this is why... You know, as I said a while ago, I, I need to understand some stuff in the Bible. I need to, I want to investigate. And in the Bible, there are so many translations. And in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Lord says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I said, what's the real deal here? Why are there so many translations? What's the real word that was used? And so I'm no scholar, but I, I, I'm curious about words. So I went to the Greek. Dictionary, and I found out that the word that was used in John 10, 10 was this. There you go. So, in other words, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it perisos. Now, what's perisos? I wrote everything word for word in the concordance in the dictionary, and this is what it says. Perisos in the sense of beyond or excess. Whew. Could you even begin to imagine that kind of life? It's beyond the thing that, you know, we're, maybe we're just living, we're just existing. But this is a life that is beyond or excessive. And this is why the root word peri, P-E-R-I, notice what it says. Super abundant in quantity or superior in quality. The second point that I would like to share with you, eternal life is a superior quality of life. Amen. When it's extraordinary. That's why it can affect people and affect circumstances for the glory of God. It's super abundant in quantity or superior in quality. It's a quality of life. And this doesn't have anything to do with money. Because there are people out there who have money, they don't have life. As my friend Ted Turner, who used to own CNN, is a billionaire. He was interviewed and the interviewer said, uh, do you still get worried? He said, yes. And then the interviewer says, what do you worry about? He says, money. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's a millionaire. A lot of people out there who don't have life. This is, perisos is an abundance of life flowing out, overflowing from you. It's an abundance of strength in trying situations, an abundance of grace in every unpleasant situation, an abundance of peace amidst the, the chaos of life, an abundance of charity and kindness amidst the apathy and indifference, an abundance of joy in the midst of sorrow, an abundance of faith in the face of impossible situation, an abundance of love, uh, an abundance of love in the midst of all the hate. You're just overflowing and people can get affected for the glory of God. It's right in you. Our problem is whatever God gives us, we put a cap. <laughs> we just give it to ourselves. No, 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 no. Life is supposed to be given away. Life was meant to be given away. Notice, notice the implications. Okay? By implication, excessive. This kind of life is excessive. So if it is excessive, give it away. Right? So if you have received an abundance of love, Give love. If you have received an abundance of forgiveness, forgive. If you have received 
the abundance of blessing? Be a blessing. Because that is the cycle of life. Life was not meant to be kept to yourself. Life was meant to be given away. This is why Jesus says, freely you receive, freely you give. give. Why? Because that's the cycle of life. Freely you receive something, freely you can give something. Why? Because I cannot give what I don't have. I got to receive first before I can give. Because that's the cycle of life. Kind of like right now. You are operating in that cycle. You are receiving oxygen and freely giving carbon dioxide. Hopefully in the right place. <laughs> so it can be up or down, right? <laughs> but you stop one of those, you'll die. You stop receiving oxygen, you'll die. You don't expel carbon dioxide, you die because that's toxic. That's the reason why the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea. Why? And a lot of Christians are there, dead. Why? They just, they just want to keep life to themselves. Listen, thank you, Lord. This is why Jesus said, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. What are you talking? Lose your salvation? No. If you want to save your life, you just want to play safe. You just want to keep everything to yourself. You, you don't want to take risks and, and love people. You just want to keep it to yourself. If you want to save your life, you will lose it. Lose what? Lose the meaning of what life is all about. You will lose the purpose of your life. But Jesus says, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. You'll find what life is truly all about. I mean, it's like what I said a while ago. If that did excite you, you know, when, when God, if God uses you, maybe something, Ariane, maybe that's just for you because you're a minister, or maybe that's just for you because you're a celebrity. No, 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 no. God loves to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Why? Because you have extraordinary life Amen. that you can give away. It's excessive. Now, this is in, you know, notice the, the three words, exceeding abundantly above. I'm going to, you know, uh, show that to you because there's another uh, portion of scripture that uses this, these three words. Exceeding abundantly above. More abundantly. That's what uh, I think is used in the King James Version. Now notice, advantage. Meaning to say, if you are truly, if you have eternal life, if you possess eternal life, you have an advantage than all the others who don't have life. You have an advantage. This is why the Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Why? Because the hope of glory is in you. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. Now, again, I want to explain some stuff because, again, for me, I need to understand what I'm believing. Hope in the Bible is not like Tagalog na sana. <laughs> the hope in the Bible is not wishful thinking. Hope in the Bible is confident expectation. You are confident that what you are expecting God to do is going to happen. Right? So that's hope. What about glory? In, in simple terms, glory means the manifestation of everything God is. To manifest means to... Uh, to make something invisible, visible. God is invisible, but His glory can shine through His people. Glory, the manifestation of everything God is. You put those two together, the hope of glory, meaning to say, you are confident that what you are expecting God to do, that He is going to show up in your life, in whatever circumstance in your life, is going to happen. Why? Because the hope of glory is where? In me. Greater is he that is in me than in In Malaysia, uh, in Klein Malaysia, after, in, in my concert, after the old call, I just asked the, 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 the counselors to just, you know, go to the side and minister to the people who accessed the Lord. And when they went to the side, there was a a young, petite girl strolling the floor. I thought that was one of those, you know, charismatic things of slaying spirit, whatnot. I just sang my final song. After I sang my final song, I exited backstage, and God just said, "Go back, pray for her." So, okay. Went down, knelt down beside her. Okay, so she was trying to get up from the waist up. Smoker. People were holding her down, but they couldn't. She was so strong. 
Her eyes were closed. Her voice was like a man. Knelt down beside her and said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get out right now. She opened her eyes and the pupil was no longer red. It was completely blood red. She was growling at me with the voice of a man. I said, No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get out right now. Bam! She fell flat. When she came to back to normal, who did that? Me? No. I just stood on the power and the authority of the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, I'm not saying that we go to a mall and then try to find a demon possessive. No, no, no. But what if, have, what if it happened to you? Like in Greenbelt, in, I don't know if you know Greenbelt in Mahaki, you know, there was a demon possessed guy and people were panicking. Now, this guy was seated, people were panicking, and a pastor just happened to pass by. And the pastor volunteered, knowing that he was a, a demon possessed guy. The pastor volunteered, said, Ako, 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 ako. And then the guy was seated. Closed his eyes, he was closing his eyes, and then when he heard Ako, 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 he opened his eyes, looked at the pastor and said, You want me to transfer to you? <laughs> the pastor ran away. <laughs> Why would you run away? If greater is he that is. You cannot get it what you don't have. Yeah. If you have it, you can give it away. Advantage. You have an advantage. You have a God that can fight your battles. When your options are lost, when you don't know where to run to, when you don't know where to go, no, no, nobody, you don't know who to call, you don't know what to do. There is a God who can fight the battles for you. Who can, there's a God who can intervene and change the circumstances in your life again for His glory. That is your advantage. Why? Because you are a child of the Most High God. Are you excited? Amen. This is where we go. What I'm saying to you is true. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to pull you away. This is why it's such a burden for me because there are so many people in churches today who don't understand what this kind of what kind of life this is. Very high, beyond measure, more. This is the kind of life, the kind of life that God wants to give you. That you can start living and as soon as you understand it and you want to apply this in your life, you can go out of this place never to be the same again. Now, as I said a while ago, there are three words here sitting among the above. The word penisos is repeated in another verse of scripture. This is and again I'm using the amplified, so it's you know it's there are so many words because the amplified version tries to broaden the understanding of, of the verse. Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do not. Here's, here's the word perishos. Super abundantly far over and above all. Oh, One word? How about the translation? Do super, he can do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think. Have you ever dared God? Maybe you're just like some Filipinos. Oh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this might be too big. No, His grace is sufficient for you. Okay? Who is what? Able. He, he should put a period or anything. According to the power that is at work, where? So, according to this, if I am not able to see the ability of God to do for me 
immeasurably, immeasurably more than all that I ask or imagine, if I do not see that God working for me, I need to ask myself, how's the power? <laughs> because the ability of God to work in your life is according to the power that is at work within you. So if I don't see the ability of God working for me, I got to ask myself, how's the power? If I were a cell phone, I would like to ask myself, am I fully charged or low back? <laughs> because if I'm low back, then I can only do so much. If I'm fully charged, I can do a lot. Because the ability of God to work in your life is according to the power that is at work. And this is why the Bible says, be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is your power. Dunamis, dynamite. There is a word where? Yes. Let me wrap this up. So eternal life is in the now. Eternal life is a superior quality of life. This is the third thing that I would like to share with you. Eternal life is divine in nature. Watch this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. So basically, the divine power of God can only be activated in our lives through our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Meaning to say, if we don't really know Jesus Christ, how can we expect the power? Are you getting what I'm saying? See, because a lot of Christians, they know about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. And this is why, thank you Lord, St. Paul says that what pleases God is for all men and women to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So our salvation is directly linked to our knowledge of the truth. And who's the truth? Jesus is. He says, I am the truth. So we need to say, I've got to know Jesus Christ. Right? I have to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. I've got I to gotta go to the Word because the Word is God. The Word is Jesus in the flesh. So the Word is God in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Because if I don't know Jesus, and just like many Filipinos, we try to accessorize our faith, and, and the common denominator is, wala na masiguro masama. <laughs> Maybe there's nothing wrong. No, we, no, 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 no. The Bible is very clear. St. Paul says we ought to have a pure and sincere devotion to Christ. Pure. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Pure. If it is not pure, it cannot be sincere. Let me give an example. There are two... Uh, you know, please forgive me for saying this, but a lot of people, a lot of Filipinos especially, when they go to Israel, they come back, they change. Sometimes, you know, this guy, it's a Chinese, went to Israel, and when he came back, he wanted to change his name from Chinese to Hebrew. <laughs> and, and since he's a Christian and wanted to share the Bible, he wanted to be called Rabbi. Okay. And the church wrote it. There's this programs that I've seen. One is an inter if I, if I mention the name, you know them here, yeah, you know him. An internationally known televangelist who says, oh, send me this money. Let me just, for the sake of argument, let me just put a put a price. Let's say fifty dollars. <laughs> send fifty dollars and we will send you this amazing prayer call or prayer shawl. Okay? Okay. What the rabbis do, right? The white with the blue and we will send, send us the, the, the donation and we will send you this amazing prayer show. What's the pitch? The pitch is this. So that you can sense the presence of God when you pray. And that, wait a minute. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that Jesus opened up a new and living way. Not old but new. Not dead but living. Opened up a new and living way by His own body and by His blood. What is the purpose? So that we may have confidence to enter the presence of God and receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Eh? 
Now, who do I trust? Do I trust this internationally known televangelist and send fifty dollars so that I can sense the presence of God when I pray, or I just receive the word of God by faith in Ripa? <laughs> because if I need the prayer show, okay, to sense the presence of God when I pray, Jesus just wasted his body and his blood. Amen. Going back to Plan Malaysia. Okay, no, but this other, this one I saw the price. Uh, a prophetess says, send us a hundred and seven dollars and we will send you this prayer show. The pitch was this, there is so much power in this thing that they make the devil back down. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, all right! <laughs> when I was in Klein, Malaysia, when God told me to pray for that demon-possessed lady, I didn't tell that, uh, I'm sorry, Lord, just call somebody else who has a prayer show. No? <laughs> I ain't got none. Are you getting what I'm saying? The divine power of God can manifest in our lives through our knowledge of Jesus. And that's the problem of a lot of Christians today. You know about Jesus, don't know Jesus. Why? Because we don't know the Word. Because we don't read the Word. And the Bible doesn't just say read, the Bible says meditate. You cannot meditate on something you don't read. And not just meditate, the Bible says study. And so we go through life, you know, adding and subtracting and saying, oh, well, maybe there's nothing wrong with this. Hello? Now, watch this. Through these, these what? His divine power and the knowledge of Jesus. Okay? Through these, He has given us His what? Very great, and you can repeat the word very, very great and very precious promises. You see the word so that? I underline why? Because every time you see the word so that, the next part is the purpose. What is the purpose? Why does God give us His very great and precious promises? So that through them, then what? The promises. You may participate in what? The divine nature. The nature of this life that God wants you to live is divine. Now here, it says participate. In Tagalog, kasali ka. In the King James, it's partake. What's partake in Tagalog? What's not partake? <laughs> They won the championship, okay? But those people, there are some people who rode the benches, didn't play a single game, but they have a ring. They partake of the championship, why? Because somebody won it for them. Hallelujah, Jesus won it for us. Hallelujah, so that you might partake of the divine nature. This is the kind of life God wants us to live for the glory of God. Now, let me just give you an example, some examples in order for us to understand. How do we participate? How do we partake in the divine nature of this life? We went to Bahrain. I went to Bahrain to do a concert. And my friends, the Filipinos there, we, we uh, they befriended a Shiite Muslim. And, and, and this guy invited us for lunch in his house. And we went there, we had lunch, and then uh, his son, maybe about four or five years old, peeped in the room, and he was so cute. He, the sun in, and we noticed that the, that the boy had skin disease. And, and, and the father just said, you know, we've been going to the doctors for more than two years, but they couldn't do anything about the skin disease. And so we would have said, well, do you mind if we pray for your kid? Said, yes. But do you mind if we name the name of Jesus? Yeah, sure. So we did. Nothing happened. Oh, but the following morning, about five o'clock in the morning, the guy started calling his Filipino, Filipino friends. He wanted to be baptized. Why? Because the skin disease was gone. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> the, healing, the healing of that boy was divine. Why? The doctors couldn't do anything about it. Can I give you that 
the example, can I testify? <laughs> <laughs> when God called me out of show business, my biggest concern about it was, Lord, how are we going to eat? How are we going to live? This, must, this is my only job. And when I told my wife about it, in 1987, she cried. She said, how are we going to eat? I said, I don't know. <laughs> we were both crying. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was too young in the faith. I didn't know. God that well? I, I didn't know that the words do not be afraid is repeated 365 times in the Bible. <laughs> One word a day. I didn't know that. So I was scared. But, but to make a long story short, finally, one year later, February 11 of 1988, um, I experienced God in a very profound way, a very, very miraculous way, and that gave me the courage three days later, February 14, to step out of show business at the height of my career, just leave show business and, and, and serve the Lord full time. And I've been serving the Lord full time for, for 30 years. And some of my friends in the business, they made a bet. They said, six months, Rayan is going to come back. Oh, but it's been 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I will never exchange my life now for my life then. Why? Because I have something extraordinary. Amen. Amen. In the years that I've been serving God, it's not a regular job, okay? I, I don't have a regular job because if I don't get invited, I don't have a job. So thank you, Pastor Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a job, okay? <laughs> and, and since it's not a regular job, then I don't have a regular income. Not like some of you, maybe every 15th, every 30th, you receive a paycheck, which technically means every day you earn. My wife has never worked. She's not a nurse, okay? She wants to be Jabba Wokies, but... <laughs> She, 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 she's never worked. Um, I am not salaried by our church. I don't ask for money when I do concerts. When people ask me, Ryan, how much is your fee? How much is your honorarium? For the past 30 years, I don't have any. Because again, my responsibility to, to God is freely I receive. Really, I want to give it. Plus, Filipinos love free, so. <laughs> So I tried going to speak because I was very tired. But something was bothering me inside. 
Uh, mainly, I got up, I said, Lord, if this is your will, my will be done, but please help me because I don't know what I'm going to do if I saw my dad. Anyway, to make a long story short, I went to the house, and there he was from the very first time in a very, very, very long time. I saw my dad. He got up from his chair, walked up towards me. And to be honest with you, if I tried to remember in my childhood, I could never remember saying this or doing this to my dad. When he got near me, I just embraced him and I said, I love you, dad. That was the first thing that came out of my mouth. I love you. To my enemy. So I knew something happened in my heart. Why? Because out of the overflow of our hearts, our mouths. <laughs> that was the first time in my life I understood what freedom was all about. I was alone in prison by my bitterness and anger and hatred towards my enemy. So the nature of my response to my enemy is divine. Through these, his divine power and our knowledge of him, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. What is the purpose? So that through them the promises, now watch this, you may. Notice the Bible doesn't say so that you will participate. It's so that you may. Why? Because the choice really is yours, isn't it? Yes. Which makes me want to go back. <clears throat> the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Notice what Jesus said. I came that they... He didn't say, I came that you will have life. Although that is also true at the end of the day. But in a very specific sense, Jesus says, I have come that you may. May denotes permission and possibility. I don't know if you still remember whenever we were still in school, elementary. Mom, may I go out? <laughs> and you're asking permission there by having the possibility to be able to go to the washroom. I have done that you may have this. But the choice is yours. You can go out of this place the very same people you came in, or you can go out of this place never to be the same again. Think about it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ryan, I like that eternal life. I like a life that is uh, abundant, a supernatural kind of life. If that is what your heart desires, raise your hand. Is that what you like? Thank you. Thank you. God is singer. Amen. There are a lot of you who would like have that kind of a wanted life. And I would like our brother Ryan to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I did not see how many of you raised your hands. But I pray honestly that if you did raise your hand, that you were honest before. Honesty is an expression of humility, and the Bible says God gives grace only to the humble. If that is your desire, I pray that you would go out of this place expectant that if you truly desire this kind of life, that God indeed is not going to withhold it from you, but He will freely give it to you. Because it's been paid for at the cross. It's been completely paid for. It can be yours. You do the you, you you have the choice. You may have this. But God, you need to understand this, God is not going to force himself on anyone. You gotta choose it for yourself. God sees your heart. I don't. And for those of you who are real today. This is the prayer. Father, Lord, thank you that you want us, you want us to live this kind of life. Lord, this is amazing. It's, it's a life that has been purchased at such a very high price by the body and by the blood of your beloved son. I remember, Lord, that when I was watching the movie, one of the born series, 
in one of the scenes there, talking about Jesus born, the guy said, you were given a Lamborghini, but you treated it like a lawnmower. But forgive us for falling short of the standard, of the glory of this life. Lord, we want, we want to experience this life, Lord. Amen. In very real terms, in real time, so that just like your promise in scripture that when you do amazing things through your people is so that people may see and know so that people may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done it because you showcase your glory through your people we want to overflow Lord so that the people around us so that the circumstances around us can get affected for the glory of God so that people may see it not so that we can brag about it it's not about ourselves lord it's about you your glory but lord since the bible says that your divine power can only be expressed through our knowledge of jesus give us the grace to know jesus more and more give us the hunger for your word because the bible says the word Jesus is the Word made flesh. And Jesus rebuking the religious leaders of his day said, You examine the scriptures thinking that by them you have eternal life. These are the very same scriptures that testify about me. So Lord, please give us the grace to hunger for your word. And when we do, by the unction of your spirit, open our eyes that we might see the beauty of Jesus through the word. So that as we continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the word, we would also be able to exhibit that life so that people may see it, Lord, for the glory of your name. Because you said so, Lord, let your light so shine that they may see the good deeds and glorify the Father. And that's our desire, Lord, your glory alone. So I pray for those who raise their hands. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That when they get out of this place, they are never going to be the same again. You are going to encounter them through your word, who is Jesus, in whose name we pray with thanksgiving. In God's name we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.